Hi, this is Paul. I'm going to show you how to use uh, live data feeds to be able to get data from reporting services into Excel without writing any code, without using the uh, export to Excel feature, which will give your users a much richer and more flexible experience in Excel so that they can consume the same data in Excel that they're used to seeing in reporting services without a lot of overhead and complexity. And so this is really kind of a best of both worlds scenario using the Atom feed capability and reporting services. So I'll start with a financial style report here in reporting services. You can see that it has three different tables and uh, I have a lot of features in those tables. So this is a table with data grouped by month uh, over a, 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 a wide range of years. Uh, that are fed by this parameter. I've got aggregate values for my order quantity and extended amount, and I have some spark lines that show the annual trend for that month. Uh, I've got totals down at the bottom. The second table you can see uh, has a two level drill down action so that I can drill down from category to subcategory, see aggregated values, subtotals, grand totals. Uh, I also have a drill through action here so when I click on one of these text box links it passes a parameter and that causes data in this third table to be um, filtered by that parameter. Now if you've worked with exporting data from reporting services to Excel you know that what you get in Excel is a static copy of the data that the user was looking at in reporting services. You don't get form or formulas, uh, formatting is limited, and there are a lot of reporting services features that just simply don't work in Excel. And much of the, the reason for that is that the features of reporting services and the features of Excel are different. And people who enjoy using Excel, financial and analytical types who use Excel, really want to have more control and they want to use the features of Excel rather than some kind of static copy of, of what they saw in a reporting services report. So what I'm going to show you will give you that capability uh, in a very easy level. Now we're designing reports uh, we're, uh, for users to consume. We're going to create this Excel quote unquote report with pivot tables and filters and uh, certain capabilities of Excel, but then we're going to give it to a user to simply start with and then they can do whatever they want with it uh, within whatever constraints we we uh, we decide to give them as far as security access and things like that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is show you how to generate the feed and then we'll go back to the report design and talk about how to enable and enhance certain capabilities. Introduced in SQL Server 2008 R2 is this Atom Feed button. You can see Export to Data Feed. This creates what's called an Atom Feed and uh, it actually saves uh, certain metadata into an Atom service file. So I'm going to save that feed file out to my downloads folder. I'm going to overwrite the earlier version that I had created. And what that does is it saves the definition of each of my data regions. So any tables, matrices, lists, or charts, uh, the definition of those objects gets saved. Every column, every field, every text box, and the parameters related to the data set that fed that table are going to be saved uh, as table definitions within that uh, feed definition. So we just created that. Uh, I'm going to leave the report open. I also have the report open in design view here in, uh, in, in uh, report builder and we'll come back to that as we need to make some enhancements and plan a little bit. So because I'm working in Windows 8, let me close an earlier version of my demonstration. I'm going to, to open up Excel, but I'm going to hold down shift, right click, and open as administrator. Now this is just simply something that you have to do in Windows 8 in order to give yourself permissions to consume data. Same thing that I have to do to open Report Manager on a Windows 8 development machine. So there's nothing special about, about uh, Excel or reporting services that requires this. It's just a Windows 8 security thing. I'm going to create a blank workbook. 
And I just want to point out that even though I have Power Query and Power Pivot installed, I am not going to use those add-ins. We're simply using the capabilities of Excel 2010, 2013, or 2016. So if the user has any version or any edition of, of uh, Excel, uh, then this should work for them. And we should be able to create reports for them uh, without using these enhanced tools. So the first thing I'm going to do is start formatting my Excel report. So I'm going to go to my original reporting services report and we'll start by copying some text. So I'll take this header and we'll just paste that. Of course it comes through using the font, font size, font weight, and color. Here uh, for the date, rather than just a static copy of that text, I actually want to put the date on my report. So I'm going to use an Excel function to do that. I'll use the today function. And then I want to format that appropriately, and so I'll go to the number menu and we'll format that as a long date. So again, I'm, I'm using the features of Excel to do this rather than getting a static copy of this data. And we'll go ahead and arrange things the way that I want. I'll go ahead and merge that across as I normally would in, in Excel. We'll left justify it. Go ahead and add columns and rows just to get this formatted the way that I want. We'll also take this table header as text and we'll paste that right there. Now I'm ready to insert this table and I want that to be a pivot table so that I have a lot of control. So I've already exported my Atom service file so all I need to do is go up to the data ribbon, choose from other data sources, choose O data feed an Atom feed is an enhanced OData feed. I will browse to the location where I saved that Atom service file. And notice that all three of my tables in my report, we'll go back to the report design and take a look at these, all three of those tables are exposed as table objects within this feed. Um, I, only, I want to reference the file rather than just getting the connection information which gives me the ability to control refreshing so I can set this connection up so that every time the user opens the file it goes back and and refreshes the data essentially runs the reporting services report again and gets fresh data uh, I can be able to to refresh it manually or I can set it up to refresh on a schedule I have a lot of control when I do it this way we'll go ahead and just click finish and I want to insert a pivot table report at the current cursor location. So I'll accept the default, creates a pivot table, and shows me my field list. Each of the tables in my report are exposed as tables that I can consume in this pivot table. This gives me a lot of power and flexibility. I want to add my orders by month table. If you go back and look at my report, you can see that I have the month and I have the order quantity and extended amount. So we'll start with the month name. And the first thing you'll notice is that these months are sorted alphabetically, as you know, it normally would. It doesn't know that the Excel doesn't know that they're months, so it just sees them as text labels and it's going to sort them for me. And then I will add my order quantity and extended amount. Those show up unformatted, but they do show up with a grand total. This is Excel doing the totals now. And so let's go ahead and Just change the headings. I want to double click on the heading here rather than the column and change this, which actually changes the field definition. It would be the same as, as right clicking and changing the field here. And so we'll go ahead and call that order quantity and format it as a number with a thousand separator and no decimals because it's an integer. Same thing here. that's currency. So problem one, how do I sort my months correctly? I don't have a column that I can sort on. Back in my reporting services report, we did have a column called month number of year, and that's what I sorted this group on. So here you can see that the sorting uses month number of year, 
but because I didn't expose that as a field in this table or a column in the table, I, it, it's not in my data feed. So what I need to do is actually add this to my table. So I'm just going to add it to the, oops, I'm just going to add it to the end of my table right here. I'll get rid of the heading. I, I, I tried adding this as, a, as a, a hidden column and that doesn't work. It's only the visible columns. Uh, the report designer also didn't understand that this is just an integer value for sorting. It wants to uh, aggregate it, so I need to get rid of the sum function. So the, the trick really is just to make this inconspicuous. So I can either leave it and just make it really skinny, maybe use a small font. Uh, or I can just do uh, white on white and then get rid of the colors in, in the heading. And, and that's what I would typically do. I'm just going to leave it for now just to keep it nice and simple. But I just need to save the report and then go back and rerun the report. So I'll click on the uh, refresh button. You can see that the column shows up. And then export the Atom service file again. Overwrite my file. And because I haven't modified any of the data that I my current uh, Excel file depends on, then it doesn't break anything. So it's, it's fine just to go to data, do a refresh all, and then you'll see that field added here. And I can simply add that to my table and then hide it. And now I can go back to my sorting options and say I want to sort by month number of year rather than the month now that sorts correctly. All right, so that's really simple. Let's go ahead and give that sheet a name. We'll call this orders by month. So I might spend more time with this, dress it up, get rid of the grid lines, change the colors, change some of the fonts, use conditional formatting, add filters, add slicers, just do all of the stuff that I would normally do in Excel. And once I have this the way that I want it, rather than starting over on the next worksheet, I'm going to copy this worksheet, which gives me a nice template and a starting point. Now, back in my reporting services report, I, I have these tables and matrices uh, on the same page. And that's the way they would export to Excel if I had used the export to Excel feature. But in order to use fresh data where the length of these tables can change, it just doesn't make sense to format this data in Excel the same way. It would make a lot more sense to use separate worksheets. So this is an example of where uh, we have more flexibility and more control rather than just taking the default behavior we get uh, with the, uh, the export to Excel uh, feature in reporting services. So let's add a new worksheet. We'll go ahead and move to the end, create a copy, and this will be sales by category. And because I have a pivot table here, uh, I can just make modifications. So let's just change the header to sales by category. Click on my pivot table, I get my fields list, and I can just start making some changes. So I'll go down, down to my sales by category, and let's add the category to rows, and then I'll remove things that don't make sense anymore. So I can remove all of these numeric values. So I've got category. And then I can add subcategory, which naturally gives me a drill down. And then I'll add tax amount, freight amount, and sales amount. Notice that uh, when the feed was created, reporting services made a point to put numbers on the end of redundant names because everything needed to be unique, which is fine. That's only internal. And I can fix that very easily just by modifying my field names and my column descriptions here. So we'll say this is category slash sub category make that a little wider double click tax amount format is currency double click 
click, freight amount. Is currency. And one more. There's the sum of the sales amount. And I think I've got a hidden column in there. Yeah, it's right there. And sales amount. And that's also going to be currency. And of course, I can always go to the properties of the um, pivot table and I can decide whether or not I want to have subtotals. Um, I'll go ahead and show subtotals. Uh, whether or not I want grand totals, I can change my formatting, etc. Et and uh, I just I naturally have all of these great features that I wouldn't otherwise have if I had exported a uh, static copy. Now, if I want to change parameter values, what do I do? Um, right now, we're getting the um, default parameters from this report. So if we go back and take a look at the report, you'll see that this was for all years and it was for all categories. So as a user now, uh, I have saved this Excel file. It's on my desktop or it's out on a network share somewhere. Maybe it's in SharePoint. I've dressed it up. Here, let's just finish this. We'll go and turn off the grid lines, turn off the formula bar, turn off the headings. Same thing here. Just dress this up a little bit and we'll save this. Put it on my computer, on my desktop. Let's put it in documents. Documents, and we'll call it uh, sales financials. Okay, so now my user wants to be able to change parameters. So we go back to the report and we'll change the reporting years and say I want to see 2011 and 2012 only and I also don't want to see clothing as a category. We'll hit view report and then I'll click on my feed button, go save that file out again, overwrite it, go back to my Excel report and hit refresh all and we'll see all of the numbers changed because it's picking up the new parameter values. It's really that simple. Um, that's probably the best user experience. One other option is to actually modify the um, service file in place. This isn't something I would normally recommend for a user, but it could be something that you could create an interface for or programmatically modify. So if you actually look in the Atom service file, you can see each of the table definitions with the parameters um, for each of the data sets behind those tables. And here we, we could go and, and we could actually uh, modify the parameter values and then resave the file. And then if we hit refresh, we, we would see the results of that. So hopefully that gives you some flexibility. It, should, it gives you some power that you wouldn't otherwise have if you were exporting a static copy of the report from reporting services to Excel. And it's going to make your analysts and your financial people a lot happier because they're using Excel to consume data. It's just that all of the complexity of the queries, the security, the parameters, all of that hard work that was done uh, when building the reporting services report is still available to the users and they don't have to deal with that complexity and then you're not exposing any security risks or uh, any unnecessary management overhead or, um, or complexity that is all been ab abstracted through reporting services.